tell me, what exactly is the role of Nigeria Ghana Business Council? Mainly advocacy. Advocacy and protecting our members on both sides. You must uh, know that we also have Ghana Nigeria Business Council. We are Nigeria Ghana Business Council. We're bilateral. So we have our colleagues in Ghana. We compare notes. We have regular interaction and we uh, um, uh, have activities that support the growth of our various companies. We are, of course, different from the Nigerian Traders Association, but we meet. I mean, they have problems which we don't have. We have problems that they don't have, but we meet to make sure that, and of course, our melting pot is in Nigerian High Commission. In, in Ghana. And before this meeting with um, LCCI, right. what did you do? I mean, your own organization, what were you able to do towards resolving this issue? We, we, had, we had in 2016, 2015 and 2016, we had two uh, uh, outings in Accra doing business in Ghana. It was actually hosted by the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana, and uh, coordinated by Ghana Nigeria Business Council. So they brought in GIPC, immigration, customs, all the agencies. And we came up with a communique, which unfortunately, because of the change of government in Ghana, uh, not, not much has happened. Uh, we had a shopping list of things that we wanted, to, and that was both of us, Ghana Nigeria, Nigeria Ghana. We had this list that we uh, passed on to the uh, Minister for Trade in Ghana. And we, this is the time to really uh, wake up and get that into the front burner again, uh, possibly in conjunction with Lagos Chamber's leading. So from your own perspective, um, what should be the lasting solution to this issue? Because um, the traders, the Nigerian traders are still still a kind of um, trading blames issue there. The ECOWAS, the ECOWAS treaty should be adhered to by all. If there would be any departure from what the ECOWAS spirit says, it should not be too nationalistic. The GIPC uh, Act is, uh, is, is nationalistic in nature and it more or less kind of uh, 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 supports the Ghanaian uh, strongly to the detriment of foreign investors. Um, we must remember that we are one. Ghana government uh, uh, agencies, their people say, oh, Nigeria is our big brother. They must demonstrate that we, are, we don't want to even be big brothers. Let's be brothers at least, first and foremost. Let us know that we can move and do business easily, freely, without being hounded. Uh, there is a major perception issue. I think the solution, one of the solutions would be to look at the perception issues because the average Ghanaian, once you say you are Nigerian, mm. puts up his antenna. Why? Because I think the, the, the perception is that the Nigerian is aggressive, mm. is um, maybe fraudulent, would want to take from you the little you have mm. and they, until you interact. They don't um, believe that the Nigerian can give. We don't have that friendly. trust. Yeah, that would be, exactly. I mean, I, I see that a lot because I, I operate uh, a lot in Takuradi, which is a community that is um, not as advanced as Accra. So when I'm in Takuradi, I see a lot of that. And when they now get to know that ah, Prince is not like that, mm. they, 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 they become very friendly. I have a lot of friends there. I move freely. And even some of them tell the others, ah, he's a different Nigerian. Mm. So that's to say that the perception of the Nigerian is mm. not too positive. How would you assess this? Has it really fared well? Frankly, no. Because there are instruments that ECOA set up that are supposed to make trade and business easy across the ECOA subregion, but they're not working. ETLS, 
and moving goods across the borders. Even the people who are supposed to regulate are not well informed about the regulation. So if most of the time it's a trader who is telling them, I have this, I have that, they don't even know that when you need to cross, you need this and that. So it has not really, really worked for the traders and the small businessmen who do a lot of business across the borders. We have a group in our business council who had set up before a one-stop shop of Nigerian goods, I think in Sierra Leone. As a Sierra Leone or Liberia, it was the war that closed that. You need to hear their experience carrying goods across the borders there. These goods were actually needed. They were required. The moment they got there, they got mopped up. But for the goods to get there, a lot of problems. So there needs to be a lot of training. ECOWAS needs to wake up and ensure that the countries that are in ECOWAS actually follow the regulations that are set up, the, the programs that are set up by ECOWAS to make life easy for uh, people who live in the region. All right. Now, uh, Ambassador Sokwe talked about um, transparency. How transparent do you think um, the you know, governments within the ECOWAS um, community, how transparent do you think their regulations have been so far? Taking a cue from what is happening in Ghana right now. Well, transparent is, I don't know how to class Relative? It. It's relative. <laughs> it's relative. They will tell you they are transparent, mm. but in action, you know, when you say something is transparent, you need to back it up with the will to make sure things happen. But that is not there. It's not there. They tell you it's transparent, but the people who are operating are doing whatever they like, and the people who are supposed to say, hey, stop that, don't say anything until there's hue and cry like it is right now. So that, I think, is a major problem. Now, how does the integration in the sub-region compare with the progress, you know, in other parts of the continent, the East Africa, North Africa, and, of course, in Southern Africa? I don't think we have integrated well in ECOWAS. And I think one of the major problems is language, English and French. Crossing Nigeria to Ghana, you have two French countries, French-speaking countries. That's a major problem. It has disturbed integration extensively. And those countries are so that if you don't speak French, you can't really operate. Mm. So integration has not been too successful compared to maybe East Africa and Southern Africa where Swahili is spoken by everybody and their borders are not as tight as ours are. So the, 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 the integration in West Africa has not been too successful. Uh, in, uh, Nigeria it probably is, is, in my opinion, is probably the only or, or, or the, uh, it's probably the only country that accepts everybody. <laughs> we have large hearts. We have large hearts. Anyway, you come in, a quick one you before, operate, you a quick one before I, let you, yeah. I let you go. Now, what is the final resolution? Uh, what did they now resolve at this meeting? At this meeting, like Ambassador Osakwe said, mm. um, we are now going to come together, all stakeholders are going to come together to, to cause negotiations. He is uh, head of the negotiating uh, table. Mm. The cost negotiations to be done between the Nigerian government officials and Ghana government officials so that we can have uh, resolutions that will uh, uh, satisfy both sides 
and make life easier for all of us. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ademiluye, for coming on the show. Thank you. I've been speaking to Bambu Ademiluye. He's the president of Nigeria Ghana Business Council.